Yeah, now, stand and cheer for your Talking Basketball Podcast. Welcome back to this episode. This is the second part of a doubleheader. If you haven't heard the first, go back. Go back and listen to it. If you can't be bothered, that's all right. Just keep listening to this one and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. And don't forget, like and subscribe. I hate it when people say that. What is the actual court like to play on, incidentally? Oh, it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, the floor is brilliant. Um, it's, it's got quite a bit of give in it. It's a wooden floor. Um, uh, we really, said the really same good. thing. The rings the the give, are good. It? It's probably it's one of the best places to play in the northeast. Yeah, if not the best one. Yeah, when we we've stood on NBA courts before, and it's just the get the spring. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like wow, this is yeah. This 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 moves. This does. Yeah, you suddenly can see yeah. why they get that sudden bounce off, and and yeah, yeah, definitely. I just I just yeah. wondered what it's like because we when you see all these courts and Vertu's got a lovely um, stadium itself because they've got seating all the way around, haven't they? Yes. Because some of the ones we were looking at have got the seating on both sides, but not on the ends. Yeah. Which always confuses me. You think, why would you not put seating at the ends? But well, here you go, Mark. Uh, you know, runoff. Keith is always yes, always, always at the. At the Newcastle Eagles game, so he puts these videos online. That's just yeah. that's one of the games. Then warming up, but I mean, look at that. Now that looks quality, doesn't it? Keith, I will say, Paul's favourite. You might have heard on some of the podcasts. He loves a hangar, like the aircraft hangar kind of setup. But that looks so similar with the really high ceiling. Yeah. What's the atmosphere look, like in when well, when the game's on? It's really really good because um, it's not too big. A space, but it's. I think it seats about two thousand eight hundred, and most of the BBL games are pretty much sold out. So there's only a handful of seats, if any. That's going right. to be getting noisy. That's going to be That's getting noisy. Loud. Yeah, yeah, it is loud. Um, and especially during free throws, that encourage a lot of noise during <laughs> free throws. But only at one end for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. So does Newcastle Eagles have a, I, could, I want to say a Northern Derby match, but it is, who's the rival that you would say, in, in your opinion? The, the the rivalry that goes back quite a number of years is the Leicester Riders. Um, yeah. They always, there's always a bit of fireworks with the Leicester Riders, um, <clears throat> which is strange because you would think it would be Caledonia where they've been a Northern sort of base team. But um, no, Leicester Riders and Newcastle have got rivalry that goes back quite a way, apparently. Well, I think you, uh, from when we were digging into the whole the BBL, uh, you know, recently we're looking at it. Certainly, Newcastle and Leicester have been prominent over the you know, last yeah. few decades. I guess fighting for the top spots. So, yeah, I guess it makes sense in that respect. But was that a legacy in your playing days? Did you have a rivalries back as far as Leicester then or was it someone different? Well in our league we had a local rival so um, at the same time we were Newcastle had a, um, a team in there was Gated which was literally across the water so that was the main rivalry was the Newcastle Gated games. Fantastic because we, um, we we had a memorial game a few months back didn't we? For the legend Mickey Byrne yeah and that was uh, you know the Portsmouth team versus the Solent Kestrels team, which was nice having that sort of Solent Derby kind of set up. And it'd be, it, we we want to encourage that sort of thing. We like to encourage that sort of thing. We felt that some of that was missing a little bit in the BBL from what we could see from the outside. Um, there wasn't as obvious matchups as maybe in say the NBA. There's certain historic rivalries. We couldn't find the obvious links necessarily. Mm. Yeah, I mean, do you think the um the BBL will expand like much bigger than it is because it's currently 10 teams. I know they're talking about like the Reading Rockets coming in. I think you've got is it Birmingham, is it a it? Birmingham team and then oh, there was a third, wasn't there? I, I read about was. a third. It was. 
Or did we just make that up because it was the something rebel, so it had a thousand people? No, that was, yeah, that's something completely different. I that, think that's there was Essex a rebel. But do you, do you think it's going to expand sooner? Well, I don't, I don't know. Um, it would be good if it did. Um, I think the only, the only constraints is um, finance for the people coming in, really. Yeah. I can't see it being a cheap operation to um, do a season in the BBL. Um, <clears throat> so, but it would be nice to have more teams. Yeah, definitely. And I think when when it's national league, I still think there's a lot of what's the word to use? Goodwill. There's a oh, lot of people there doing things free. Yeah, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> stuff like that. National <clears throat> league, even up to Div One, like all the like the a lot of um, volunteers at the force like i'll do all the music all the entertainment all the announcing um if there's a uh, you know we like things even things like this like you know we're getting not getting anything we're just doing it for the love of the game yeah um so i get so when it goes to bbl then everyone everyone gets paid is it or is there still people doing it out of goodwill i think there's still quite a lot of volunteers <clears throat> just to keep the cost down um because a lot of people just like to get involved just because they love the basketball. So, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. And how do you think uh, the Eagles are going <clears> to <throat> do this year, Keith? Because they're up and down. Like like the other day, we, yeah, I mean, we were talking about the think, Lions game. Yeah. They could have won that. They were up by like 12 uh, yeah. with like, five minutes yeah. left and kind of it's that fourth quarter again, isn't it? Yeah, early season, I think the fourth quarter was, was an issue because there seemed to be thereabouts for three quarters of the game and then in quarter four, they just lost the plot. I don't know why, but just when they thought we were getting on track, when they had a few wins, um, they've gone they've gone backwards again. So consistency is an obvious uh, obvious issue. Um, but I think you're going to get that if you've got you know a bunch of strangers brought in at the beginning of the season, and it takes a while for them to knit together as a team. Um, so we'll we'll see. Time will tell if we can um, function a bit more um, as a team and and get a bit more consistent. But I would like to see them do well. Yeah, <clears throat> it, I'm really um, keen on seeing the um, the reverse fixture of the Lions coming coming to the. Uh, I'm going to say Eagles Nest because that's what I've been calling it. What, what's your home court? Is there a nickname for it? Um. <clears throat> I don't know if it is the Eagles Nest. I'm not sure. It's just the Virtue Motors Arena. Okay. As far as I know. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm generally looking forward to that fixture because it's like, um, you know, look, someone's dented that crown on the someone, Lions' head. Someone now. has dented. Someone's the Lions dented crown. it, and it's like, you know what? The Eagles were look like in the driving seat five minutes going, and then it was just like, what happened? Um, so L London didn't win that. They lost it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was the thing, <clears> wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, well, we were saying that, and then I was talking to Keith, and he went, Eagles lost that in the last yeah. quarter. It was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, Keith, moving on, like, you know, you, with your Fimba GB playing um, playing days um, now, and there could be a promotion to mascot. What's going on with the mascot? I saw I saw a picture online that said, who is this? Uh, and I saw the number and I went, well, I, I think that's Keith. <laughs> so um, I'm so, going to get the picture up for, uh, yeah, for Mark I'm, whilst I've got to see here. that. You want to see this? You want to hear the story behind the mascot? Yeah. Yes, please. Has he, have you seen it? I'll just get it. Oh, here we go. Oh, so what's the, t who's the, who's the mascot for? It's the GB mascot. It's Leroy the Lion. Leroy the Lion. But yeah, so he sometimes makes an appearance at all the GB games, men's and women's, seniors. Love it, and I like the ball as well. Just, oh yeah, that's really <clears> cool. <throat> oh yeah. Do you not see that? It's got the the gold thimber thing on it. That's yeah, very very that's cool. brilliant. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's really I love that. I like the colours as well. So how did that come about? Okay, so last year. Um, we had training, uh, FIMBA had training in Sheffield, the GB60s. And the week before that, the GB senior team were playing a, a European qualifier at the Eagles Arena. And 
Leroy was there doing his stuff, you know, getting the crowd going and what have you. But, but they needed the they needed the the um, mascot suit, sorry, to be at another game which was down south. So Nicky phoned me up and said, "Can you collect the Leroy suit, <clears throat> bring it to training, and then um, Nicky's husband Jeff is our team manager." So I'll give the suit to him to take down to the next GB game, which I think was, I think it was in Manchester after that. Um, so <clears throat> for a few days, I had this um, <laughs> suit lying around in the house. And the, I can the just imagine it begin. lying there and he was just like walking <laughs> past, like looking at it like. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder what it's like to wear that bit. So. <laughs> I had the brain where I thought, right, if I, if I put it on, I put the Simba strip on and get the Simba ball and take a few snaps, so we can use that to promote Simba basketball. Um, and Nick, you can use it in some of the ads and stuff. So lo and behold, um, that's how it came about. But I'll tell you, for, I would not like to wear that for two hours and run around trying to get the crowd going because it's like claustrophobic as hell. <laughs> What's the, what's the vision like inside? Do you, can you see oh, it's much? It's almost zero. It's just you can, it's just like a small letterbox in front of your eyes. And you can, if you can't, if there's nothing directly in front of you, you can't see it. It's just <laughs> like nuts. <laughs> Keeps just walking like little kids. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, put, I had it on for about two minutes and that was enough for me. So for two hours, I don't know. How, the guy didn't get paid enough if he didn't get paid. Uh, to run round in that for two hours, he, yeah. he's an absolute hero. Yeah, the the, um, the Ports of Force mascot we call him Blue. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I tell you what. Whilst whilst I'm saying this, I will I'll get a picture up of him to to show you. Yeah. He has his own um, Facebook page now, and um, there's lots of videos with him on <laughs> online causing mischief. Um, isn't it so typical? I can't actually find a. Oh, there we go. Um, you see that, Keith? Ah, yeah. Like Force Fox is what they. Oh, he's a fox, right? I'm Force with you. Yeah. With the kit on. Cool. And um, so, yeah. Gets a bit toasty inside. So gets a bit toasty. So the 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 chap who's inside literally. Um, he, yeah. He, he, if you put goggles on your eyes for the people listening. That's kind of what he sees. Other than that, it's black. So he, his vision isn't great. So, um, like a ball from the court landed on his lap on Saturday, and he's like, he said to me, he goes, it's like, it goes, a ball landed in my hand. I didn't know what it was for, where, where the ball it is, the game ball. And the ref's like, give me the ball. And he's looking around, going, what's going on? What's going on? And the ref's like, give me the ball. We're playing a game. The ref thinks it's a, he's having a joke, having a laugh. He's sitting there thinking, that ref's getting a bit annoyed. I wonder what he's going on about. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ref runs over, grips the ball from him. He's like, oh, that was the game ball. Okay. Um, but yeah, he finds it very challenging as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, That's great. I love the fact he's like, I just want to put that on. Who wouldn't? Who yeah, would not? got to do that. Everyone would do it. Um, yeah. So, wow. Mark, do you have any questions? I know if you got your your, your I, usual five and pine coming up soon. I always have them coming up. Do you, I mean, Keith? Do you support an NBA team? Um, kind of. Um, I support um, the Orlando Magic. Well done, Keith. Good the job. Orlando Magic. Yes. <laughs> How did they know that? <laughs> oh, do you really? Yeah. Ah. Right. Hang on one second. Keith supporting your. Orlando Magic. <laughs> yes. Someone has to. Yes. Now, the, the only reason is that um, the first NBA game I ever went to was at the old Amway Arena. Oh, yeah. And it was in 2006, and it was against Miami when Shaq had left the Lakers and gone to Miami. The year they won the championship, so I got to see Orlando play Miami at the Amway Ooh. Arena, and then was that where it was called TD? Years, 
Was that Tam- yeah, that was the old TD Waterhouse. TD Waterhouse. The, the, the new one's called the Amway Centre, I believe. Yeah. What's so it? the next time we went on holiday, the Amway Centre was built. And we went to see... Um, who were they playing? Dallas Mavericks. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it, Mark? Well, Mavs would have won anyway. No, they didn't actually. What? <laughs> However, they did go on to win the championship that year. Oh, 2011, well, there we go. So basically, Keith, what you're yeah. saying is whoever you watch when you go to Orlando has won the NBA championship. Um, So far. Yeah. Wow. If you want to go watch another Dallas game this year, that'd be, I, I really appreciate <laughs> that. And Cuban might hear this uh, and go get him over. We, we need the help. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm just trying to, who won it in 20, when did we go? 2019. Who won it in 2019? Uh, I, the Lakers. That, was the Lakers that, that was the bubble one 2019 2020 that was the bubble one so that is I mean I've been to Orlando there, a few there's times. an asterisk on that I don't care what they say that was the only time I've not seen the NBA champions play when I've been in America so like I was in I was in LA um, went to watch a game there when they won the championship um, we are in Miami and uh, who do we watch it was like I watched Detroit and they won it that year in 2004, maybe. So, um, yeah. yeah, Keith, it's you, your your luck is still going. Mine, mine got broken by LeBron. <laughs> but it, right. was, it was going on for 20 years. A magic. Every, I was like, literally, one of these guys is going to win the championship. But when we go to America, we do watch a lot of basketball. Like last yeah. time, we watched like seven or eight games. Um, really? Yeah. yeah. What I, I, really, have done two, I have done two NBA games in one one day. Really? Wow. Yeah. How did you do that? Uh, 2019, um, booked a trip to New York, having studied the fixtures. And on um, Black Friday, I think it was, um, <clears throat> the Brooklyn Nets were playing Minnesota at 12 o'clock on Black Friday. And then at half seven, uh, the New York Knicks were playing um, New Orleans Pelicans thinking they're the only teams that could be nearby unless you had a flight booked but yeah oh wow that must be yeah. great yeah I, I know people who, who've done the nets when they were new jersey nets and the knicks i think yeah. they, i think they did that yeah it's just Look, a, it's a 10 minute um subway ride between the two stadiums really oh that's very cool <laughs> and and that would have literally been the same time we were out there actually because keep said around 2019, 2019. Well, October, November 2019, we were in um, Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeedy. But yeah, that, that was some good games there, if you watched that. But New the York, only that's... Other NBA, the only other NBA games I've been to were the ones when they had them in London, you remember? Yeah. At the O2? Yep. Yeah, we went to watch the Celtics play and, well, again, we watched the Celtics play and they won the championship that year yep they did yeah they were they weren't bad they were but we've lost that now to paris haven't we? it's not in london anymore it doesn't feel the same it doesn't feel the same when you when you're in the nba and you're there and you've got all the atmosphere all the entertainment all the razzmatazz and then you see it in london and it's just like the crowd interacts differently so that is one of the things that i was really impressed with about watching the bbl and getting into it this year again seeing all the fans like in newcastle like in uh, what was the other one i think it was plymouth the pavilion and when you see the crowd and they're really getting into it and and everyone everyone who's there and they're packing out the stadiums they're really making noise and everyone's having a really good time and you think oh okay didn't really know, really appreciate that that was happening on because but we that's haven't got their team exactly. And then when they go to say like the O2, it's just like, oh right here, I'm just watching two NBA. You don't have that passion, no. Um, so I mean, we sat there and it's like, let's go Celtics, let's go, and it was quite. Oh, I did not tame. It was quite tame. I'm not seeing for Celtics. But then let's say you went, you then go down to you know the Motors Court. Yep. Two and a half thousand. That would probably be louder than it would the O2. Oh, that'd the be NBA. deafening. Yeah, that'd be deafening. Um, yeah. Well, we, we do want to, at some point, get to go and, and get to see all the courts. Because when we've seen all these arenas and seen all the atmospheres, it just looks so much fun. 
I want to go to the yeah. Eagle's Nest and go to reception, have my picture taken there, like pointing down like where Keith was, like that. Yeah. Then I want to go to the scorer's table and be pointing down like that, having a photo there. Yeah. And then... Are you not going to get a picture with Keith laying in the spot? Yeah, that would be even better. And then and then we're going to go and go and sit wherever Keith sits because he, he sits behind the ba bas one of the baskets somewhere. Oh, yes, it? yeah. So we're going to sit there. What yeah. is What is the... What is your favourite position to watch a game from, Keith? If you could have a choice, would it be centre court? Would it be where you're sat? Or well, I think the ideal place is centre court on the side. But to be honest, there's no bad seats in the, in, in the Newcastle Arena. It's all pretty good vision all the way around. Yeah. So unless you're right behind the backboard, um, which is probably the worst seats, if you're off to the Either side on the ends is fine. Anywhere down the side is great. How does the um, seating work with that, Keith? Like, is it like, I mean, like, we, uh, my experience would be um, at the moment National League Div One and uh, sorry Div Two and Div Three, and it's like you pay, you go in, you sit wherever you want to sit. Is it similar, or are you? Have you no, got a when seat? You, if you book a ticket online, you get to choose your seat. So you'll get a seating chart with um, all the dots on. So obviously the red dots are taken and the 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 ones that are free you just tap which one you want or which two you want and you pick your own seat and for someone who hasn't been to a newcastle game is there anything you'd recommend to them if someone's listening to this now and goes oh, you know what i want to go and check out one of those well, if you've never been i would just go doesn't matter where you sit just no. go and, and sample the atmosphere do Get they have any special balls. food? Any special food there? Do they have a like a, anything there, a concierge or anything that you'd recommend? Um, I've never. I don't think I've ever, ever had any of the food from the concierges, but they sell the normal hot dogs and pizza Lovely. and nachos, and there's a bar and stuff like that. So yeah, it's good. I think next time Keith goes, he's going to have people going up to him saying, "You're on the Talking Basketball podcast." Yep. And then can you, can you go and pose in your in your spot, Keith's spot? <laughs> That's what they're going to want. Want a yeah. picture in Keith's spot. That's exactly what they want. It. Oh, dear, that'd be great. <laughs> now that would be really good. Um, yeah, that that's that's pretty cool to know that there is uh, not so just like not a bad seat in the house, but some places are, are, are definitely. I'd imagine you you want to sit in certain places. Um, when we went and sat in a couple of seats, we got some really high seats in one of the. Orlando games and although you've got a big top down view it's, you don't get the atmosphere as soon as you went to the lower bowl it changed yeah. everything and there was atmosphere yeah. you were part of the game you could hear it all going on well uh, yeah. even, even worse case like with the Orlando one what I would always do if I wasn't lower bowl you can get an upper bowl seat and then you go to the Budweiser bar so do you know on one end behind a basket you've got the, the Budweiser bar you can go there get a drink but yeah. you can it's stand standing room only but if you're there early enough you've you know you've got you literally got your a bar there you've got your row uh, uh, like a like a standing table where you can put your drink and a burger or whatever but then you've got you're you're at the top of the lower bowl but that's better than being yeah it's a nice in, it's in a nice view. seats I think um, and I would say the atmosphere by the Budweiser bar in the Orlando Arena is amazing. That is great. That is, it's just, it's just loud. Just, just loud. Just don't get a drink or anything from the top because that was awful. <laughs> yeah, that was. But I do like the fact that they've got the part, uh, the car park now right. Like, I can't remember. The, the parking seemed to be a bit of a pain in the balls with the, mm. the TD Waterhouse yeah. um, where someone would you'd park somewhere and you'd be walking to the stadium whereas this one is there's a huge car park you, you go to it and then you walk like uh, I don't know how to explain it like a it's just a multi bridge. like a multi yeah it was the air bridge like a, the multi story like a, yeah, yeah like an air bridge over to into the stadium um, so yeah is it all park on site in the Birching centre um, there is quite a big car park outside yeah um and the street parking fairly close to it as well. So I must get pretty uh, must get pretty busy if you've got like two and a half thousand people rocking up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's pretty busy on a on a Friday night. It sounds um, amazing. Sounds so what, amazing. what is Newcastle's next game? 
Oh, are you asking me? Yeah. I've not looked. Always, that was like, all the stuff I've not, I've not looked at. Do, that. Keith, do, you have a, do you have a prediction for that, Keith? Is that, is that at Man home? Yeah. Yeah, Manchester at home is the next game, yeah. What's your prediction, Keith? Well, on paper, Newcastle should win, shouldn't they? But uh, we'll wait and see how consistent they are. <laughs> what, what's your thoughts on the season so far? In general? For um, uh, the, well, B the BBL fairly league, fairly close, apart from one obvious team. Yeah. Um, so London Lions are just running away with things at the minute, um, probably because of the team they've put together with all the money that they have. Um, and then there's a there's a big gap between the the rest of the league, really. Um, but the the rest of the league's fairly close, I think. Yeah, it, there was. I think there was three or four teams that were almost joint but they were just splitting hairs and then they kept swapping positions over the last few yeah. games yeah I think last week it was between second place and sixth place it was four point difference yeah was, I mean it's nothing yeah, yeah nothing. you've got like Bristol, Cheshire Newcastle uh, Leicester Plymouth. they're all they're all chopping changing and then Plymouth and Surrey were chopping changing with Manchester at the bottom they're, not like they're all cycling through yeah. it's sort of like there's two things all cycling at the same time but within two games you could flip right up to the top again and yeah that it's it's i mean paul called it the other day he said that's it league's over yeah i did keith i said season's over get us to give the give the trophy to london lions now <laughs> but then they yeah. go and lose i said to i said to him <laughs> i bet they lose next week now i've said that <laughs> but I, I still think you're a what a, a, over a quarter under a third of the way through the season they've Where's lost one game okay I think they, and I said to you I think they're going to lose three or four games this season yeah it's 36 games roughly they're 12 13 games in they're literally a third of the way through yeah um but yeah I've not looked at the stats of those game that that game yet because I wanted to see if there's any big players missing or because yeah I it, mean it's, losing 20 after beating everyone yeah. is I was like what, what's just happened there well, apparently it wasn't a full squad, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, they didn't win. Yeah. So, you know, chalk it up to how you want it. I think it. I think it'd be good for the league if a few more people got some consistent wins against them now. Um, yeah. And it gives it gives all the other teams more momentum. I think it makes it more exciting for everyone watching. Otherwise, you just go yeah. one team, and then there's nine others who are competing for pride. I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Well, Keith, I mentioned before about a questions. And one of my questions is, who would you give a ball to to take that clutch shot? And you go, I'm going to give it to them. They're going to take that shot. The, it's shot. Hands. the, the sh shot. The shot. Maybe that's the question. It should be the shot question. The, the shot question. Yeah. yeah. Any well, player? I mean I guess the boring answer that everybody says is you've got to give it to Michael Jordan, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, 90% of the people that you've asked that question must have said that, have they? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. There's been a few, but yeah, I, I, that's, that's not far off. Prob yeah, yeah, maybe about 90. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just a strong 80, 90% of them. Yeah. The only other ones, oh, Alan Iverson turned up once. Um, Kobe. Kobe. Mm. Um, I think Bird. someone said they someone said they take their shot themselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, but did Bird get anywhere? Is it just? I think Bird might have gotten in I there. I need to do the. the but other than that, up. that's it. And MJ, obviously. Yeah. And we no, probably it's predictable, but probably. I think that's who I'll go for. Yeah. MJ seems pretty safe, doesn't he? What yeah. about what about your five and pine? You can pick five players and one on the bench. Mark, we need a jingle. Five and pine. Five and pine. We'll make a jingle. We need a for jingle for that. Like I literally now write down one to five and then pine. Five and pine. It's a great name. I can't say pine too much because Keith was laying on the pine last time. So, <laughs> Keith, you're feeling okay? Yeah, everything's okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not in the You're arena, right, so I'm all good. I'm good. Right, we're all I've good. got no PTSD. I'm good. Right, we're all good. <laughs> um, starting five. Um, so I would I would go with Alan Iverson at point guard. Oh, lovely. Um, Jordan's got to be a shooting guard. And then the two forwards, I would probably go with LeBron and Pippen. And I would have Shaq in the centre. 
And then sixth man, just to throw a bit of a curveball, I always thought he was my favourite sixth man when he was in the league, and that's uh, Jamal Crawford. Crawford. Oh, wow. There you go. Crawford is in. In. He is in. I think Pippin. I don't... He's not come up he before. Hasn't. He hasn't. Which has always surprised me. Mm. Um, yeah. That's the same thing with Shaq. Shaq's not come up that much either. No, he was considered on mine, but yeah, it's that's a strong team. That is a, that is as strong as it's going to get. What's quite funny, actually, I'm just looking at that. I know with the All Star Game, it's actually gone back to East and West now for this season. They're, is it? Oh, okay. yeah, they're going to do East versus West. They you know, did a very sneaky announcement on that. Um, I thought they were going to abolish it all together at some point have they, have they not talked anymore about that no I think everyone hopes yeah. they were after the last few years where it's just everyone yeah. switched off it's too friendly isn't it yeah whereas they want yeah. to go back to East versus West and on paper you think well the West is the strongest but I was just looking at this now Iverson, Jordan LeBron, Pippin Shaq other than Crawford if you take it out of the equation those five players all played in the East mm. it, 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 you think Shaq in Miami, Shaq in Orlando. Yes, he played in LA, but he also played yeah. in Boston and I believe, oh, with Phoenix. Phoenix. Um, and, Miami. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Miami. Cleveland. Orlando. Yeah, Cleveland. Apps, yeah, uh, Cleveland as well. Uh, obviously, Pippin, Jordan goes without saying. LeBron, Cleveland, um, and Iverson, obviously, in Phillies. So that's actually pretty much a strong East team. Yeah. I, I would say rather than even a mix. Yeah. That's a great team. Yeah, that's a that's, great choice. That would be an absolute headache, wouldn't it? And I think they would play together pretty well. Yeah. That's a good one, Keith. That's a very, Thank very you. nice one to end on. Uh, oh, any questions for well, Keith? Am I pushing any buttons here? Yeah. What, what, the same one? Whatever you want to push. Oh, I don't know. It's quite heavy, isn't it? Well, just put the top, top, right, top left. There you go. There you go. All right, there you go. That's bottom left. Well, Keith... Left. Keith, thank you very much for joining us today. And um, I'm sure all the listeners who who um, who tune in to this episode are going to enjoy it, especially know your story and, you know, uh, you know that's you yeah. know, how, how we started talking that. and stuff like that. And it was just, yeah, it's, it's human, yeah. isn't it? It is, absolutely. And if everyone can club together and ask Paul Blake to get a commemorative plaque yes for you on the floor <laughs> yes. just just near that yes. announcer's table that's yes. what we need to do Paul if you're going to listen to this which obviously you will at some point just get that commemorative <laughs> plaque put it down there for Keith yeah here almost lieth Keith <laughs> Fimber GB almost. number 60 um, and um, if I, I suppose if there's anyone interested in sponsoring um, uh, Fimber GB. Um, I tell you what, well, if you email UK Basketball, what is it again? UK wow. Basketball Podcast at gmail.com. That's the one. UK Basketball Podcast at gmail.com. Email that and I will forward that email over to um, Nikki or yeah. Keith, whoever. Um, so, so just touch on that quickly. So that means that someone listening to this could actually sponsor the GB team. Oh, of course they can. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mark, I thought I thought you might. Yeah, no, I know. I thought you might do it through the Talking Basketball podcast. Well, we could do that, but it'd have to make a mascot of me with my face, and then Keith has to get but, in it. Hey, I haven't, I haven't got I haven't got a card with me, but <laughs> it's a, once once in a mascot great logo. Suit for me, I'm not doing it. You've again. got to, Keith. <laughs> you've got a taste for it now. I can tell. You've got a taste for that. Hey, Mark, you could do a big sponsorship and say, I'm only going to do the sponsorship if Keith is the mascot for one game. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but no, that's that's worth knowing. Anyone who's listening out there, if you do genuinely want to do, um, to sponsor, it's not just your local league teams, which obviously if you aren't supporting, support them, or your national league teams, obviously get involved, but you can actually support the national team yeah. at lots of different age levels. And uh, yep. I think they would all definitely appreciate the support. Uh, yeah, definitely. just as much as definitely, definitely the money. But yes. the support's just as important. UK Basketball Podcast at gmail.com. Absolutely. Right. I'll Keith, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.
And it goes without saying, if you haven't listened to all of our episodes previously, go back and check them out. We've got like 33, 34 episodes now, and we've got lots and lots more people lined up, Paul. How many have we got at the moment lined up? Uh, oh, too many to say, mate, but we got too many. He's, he's multitasking, he's getting scared. Yeah, we got a few. Anyway, I've been Mark, he's been Paul. Thank you so much to Keith, and thank you everyone for listening. Tune in next time. Oh, I would just like to say a huge shout out to the Newcastle Eagles chairman, Paul Blake, for not having any badminton lines at the Eagles Nest at the Virtue Motors Court. That is amazing. No badminton lines. Thank you. Your hatred for badminton just runs deep, doesn't it? It's a terrible sport.